Hello, Deepak. Hello, Lucina. Uh, hi. Hello. Oh, sorry, I'm late. Hello, Happy New Year. Yeah, you too. Sorry, it's on mute. Uh, right. Um, yeah, in case it wasn't already there, I'd link to the meeting notes. Um, people could add their names. Um, so this. Okay. Um, so no announcements, uh, upcoming events, has anyone got anything to add to those or any detail on some of them? Um, I know Lucina, you, you submitted the proposal for Cloud Native Telco Day before Christmas, didn't you? I did. I haven't received a, a response to that. Okay. Uh, in fact, this is my first 
the back from the break, so I'll, I'll check the the timeline and see when we should expect to hear back. And okay, uh, cool. Thank you for doing that. Um, So yeah, has anyone got any other events that they want to add to the list or updates or thoughts, comments on the ones that are here? Okay. So I've got a pull request. Um, uh, right. So this was um, a discussion we'd had at the last meeting about the people who wanted to submit um, part of a best practice document. So maybe the summary. Um, we were kind of investigating the different ways that we could enable that. So one option is uh, an issue template uh, like this, which where each section from the best practice proposal is a section in the issue template for people to add um, whatever wording they like. Uh, so, um, sign in. The alternative to that was this Google Docs approach where we, for example, just have the, the template in a Google Doc format and people can add some wording and then people can comment on it, etc. cetera. So um, both options are open at the moment for this particular issue. Um, so if we jump back to the issue template option as a spelling error, which I can modify. Um, has anyone else got any any chance to review this um, and sign it off if they can? That'd be great. Um, and so. so basically, Tom, the, the main idea is to um, give feedback about the, the template, right? Not the, the content of the template. Uh, yeah, just the issue template itself, not the content. Okay, yeah, so probably I just need that particular context. <laughs> it's quite hard to see what it will look like when it's in this format, but basically each of these um, types um, where it's a text area will just be a text box for people to fill in. Um, so it's basically a prompt for, you know, what it says here. Um, so if all, all someone wants to do is add a summary, then that's all they need to, to fill in. So if, if um, we could get some um, some reviews on that. That'd be good. <clears throat> Similarly, um, so I, I see Victor, you've commented on this as well, which is good. Thank you for that. Um, I haven't finished this at all, obviously, but. Um, this relates back to um, this issue. Um, so it'd be good if people could have a, I'll, I'll, um, I'll fill this out a bit further. I've only done the summary up to now. I'll fill it out a bit further and then people can, uh, I'll put it in Slack or something and people can start to have a look at it. Okay. So any other issues? Let's have a look. Uh, 
I found quite interesting the um, the feedback that Gagari gave us to the single process per container best practice. Um, if you remember, right. yeah, probably. one process type. Oh yeah, no, I remember reading this and then thinking I need to come back and have another read of this, and I never did. So, so uh, try to investigate a little bit more about that particular best practice. Uh, what I found was um, it is it is okay to have multiple. I mean, obviously the the suggestion is to try to just use one process per container, but in cases that you can um, have just single one, the best practice here is uh, use a kind of um, a process manager, uh, like a super supervisor D or uh, tiny or all of these tools to make sure that you can proper manage the, the signaling. Uh, so in that case, any, any signal that you receive from your process, like a sick term or all of these, and needs to be propagated properly to, to the uh, container runtime. So. Yeah. And of course, uh, there are people who are saying like, yeah, this is a, you shouldn't go in this way, like a, I, I didn't found any place uh, where were uh, mentioning about uh, impacting the performance um, using um, more process per container or things like that. So yeah, who knows? Okay, so we're just waiting on um, responses to your feedback. Yeah, it's an interesting one. Um, there definitely needs to be something that's measured. Question is what, like you say. Yeah, and the other, probably the other tricky thing is like um, if we allowed to run a more than a more than one process per container, how we are going to validate it in terms of like a, um, the test suite <laughs> tool. Uh, so. And yeah, and whilst it might be a kind of um, What's the word? Gold standard, maybe. Mm -hmm. How how realistic is it in terms of, you know, real, what people would call cloud native applications? How many are single process containers? I don't know. So what? Hmm. What I'm trying to think is, um, what's the rationale for this? Um, oh well, and and is there is there a different thing we should measure to to drive people towards the benefit that underpins that rationale? So is it pod size or is it your container size rather, or is it? Um, log visibility, or is it, you know, something else that we should be testing instead? Yeah, I feel like uh, they, they follow the same Unix principle, like uh, just do one thing at a time, like, like doing one thing good. And like, uh, also they, they mentioned this, like a single concern principle, like uh, 
So mm -hmm. if you if you have only single process and your log only corresponds to that process and everything is just right with a single thing, um, yeah, you cannot mix it up. So I, I think that that's that's the main rationale mm -hmm. to suggest this. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's see if he comes back with uh, any response to your suggestion. Give him a nudge. Okay. Um, So this one we've just been through, that's the uh, Google Doc that I'm preparing. Um, do we know if there are any, I can't remember the status of this quite old one, nearly two years old, whether we're gonna do anything about it or close it. Hmm, yeah. Well, the last thing, uh... I think that we can start proceeding to um, train the draft and put the PR for for that. So I didn't see any any objection to to implement it. Like I mean, we have that as a best practice. Yeah. So it's already now an essential test. So the best practice would basically be just mirroring that. Well, let's see if we can do that in this quarter then. So that's quite an old, an old issue. So it'd be good to be able to close that. Um, the requirements for multi-interface. So I recall you sent a document around with some thoughts in it. So on hold as Network SIG are discussing how to standardize. Yeah, for this one, I guess the main, I'm not saying roadblock or like a, uh, but definitely one major point to consider like uh, the efforts that the multi network community is like doing. And also the, the last thing that they, do, they did was opening that PR. So it seems like they're uh, having great progress on um, modifying the API, the Kubernetes API to support multiple networks. So, uh, I don't know how close they are in terms of like implementation, um, but, but yeah, it seems like they're moving um, in that particular direction, which yeah. is great, like uh, they're conventional or, or corner cases. Okay, yeah, this is pretty active then, still happening within the last week. Mm -hmm. Okay, how long has that been open? Three weeks, okay, not too long. All right, well, let's, um, let's keep track of that then. So in terms of this issue then, should we close it or put it just leave it on hold and keep it open do you think mm, I, I i think that we can keep it open uh and 
eventually uh, transform our best practice to to use uh, whatever that they have implemented. So probably, sure. I mean, it's not saying not. It's just like just modifying it. Because part of me is also thinking. Um, or we can close it and, and maybe reopen later if we consider like that proper. I mean, better. No, if we think we're going to do something, then let's keep it open, but mark it as on hold. Um, and then. And then it's just clear from looking at it. Okay, I'm not aware of any other updates on these ones, which I think we've been through a few times. Taylor or anyone else, do you have any updates? So one of the things that I, I remember, like uh, we were trying to accomplish is like um, to define CNF or some of the other terms in the CNF glossary, NCF glossary. So maybe we can start with just one or the simple one or the most controversial one, which is like CNF. So or what do you think like should be a good idea to start that proposal in the CNCF glossary um, project? Um, yeah, do, would that be an issue in this repository or in the CNCF glossary repository? Yeah, I think it's just a matter of uh, submitting a PR, but once, uh, I mean, just submitting the PR is not not quite complicated. The most the most complicated thing is trying to define it and being a consensus and say, well, this is going to be our definition. Yeah. I don't know where where is it where's the glossary held? Is it in the website repository or is it a separate one? Oh. Um it's in the recentia. Uh yeah. And you can find it as a glossary. Yeah, that one. Okay. And I guess that they have some campaigns as well, but um, yeah, they, they have uh, different things like terms or, and also once that you propose something is like that, that particular definitions goes through different stages, like a draft, uh, feedback appreciated or things like that. So. Yeah. So you think we should add add some things into this list? Mm -hmm. Yep, because I have seen things for security for uh, other things. So maybe having our own uh, definitions there could be helpful. Okay, so do you think we should just, uh, do you think we should agree as a community, seeing CNF working group, um, which terms we should then just singular, singularly request adding to the glossary or do it bit by bit? I, I, yeah, I think, yeah, thinking singularly could be, it could be something that we discussed here, like, uh, I mean, it's our, like, uh, or, or discussion in our own uh, repository or, and eventually got something and <laughs> to me in the yeah. PR there. Yeah. I don't know if there's any in here or not. Hmm. 
yeah, definition of the CNF of a CNF. Yeah, it was started with Jeff two years yeah. ago. The second. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, these, these discussions are just uh, why I think probably nothing's happened is because when we try and define what is a CNF, we can end up with a lot of different opinions. Um, okay, so let's create an issue for it because otherwise we won't track it. Um, but we'll link off to the discussion points that have been had already. Okay. I work for you, Victor. Yep. Yep. Cool. Okay. Um, any other updates on these issues this week? Okay. Um, that's it from my side. I don't know what else has something. Um, okay, no, no other agenda items. So is there any other business from anyone? Uh, by the way, I found like a, the Silva uh, community is going to have their own a meeting uh, end of the month, something like around uh, January 25. So, are you aware of that or? Uh, no, no, a regular meeting or a one off event type thing? I think just uh, uh, let me see if I found it. Someone posted in the Slack. Uh, yeah, probably. 
Uh, but no, to answer a question, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's going to be a bit more friendly for you because uh, that's a European time zone. Um, Okay, I got it. Um, just paste it in the, this, the, the Zoom chat. So the next one is going to be Wednesday 21st, um, 10, oh, okay. 10 Central Eastern time, or in, yeah, Central European time. Yeah. And it is this year's meeting, yeah. Yeah, so I, um, I'm not involved in silver anymore. Okay, that's interesting. Every two weeks on a Wednesday. Okay. Anything else to add? Cool. In that case, I shall close the call and see you next week. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Okay. Cheers all. Cheers. Bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye.